Hi everyone, this is John Daly again. I'm here with Bernie Goldberg for another episode of the No BS Zone. How's it going today, Bernie? So far, so good, John. I'll Excellent. hope to see with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so today we'll be talking about a, a few different items. Uh, the first one is a uh, topic um, you talked about a little bit last week in your off, off the cuff. Um, so a couple of Republican governors, uh, Greg Abbott of Texas and Ron DeSantis of Florida, They've been uh, transporting mostly some uh, South American migrant workers from Texas. Um, they came into Texas when they crossed the border and, and claimed asylum. Um, they've been they've been moving them or shipping them or sending them, however you want to say it, to uh, these prominently uh, liberal cities, including Washington D.C., New York City, and Chicago, and and sort of famously lately uh, Martha's Vineyard. Um, you have some thoughts on this, including what's the uh, what the motivations of these politicians are. Right. Unless the people watching us have been in a coma or on vacation on Neptune, they know the details. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on the details. I want to quickly get to what I think is the most important part. Anyway, the details are Republican governors in Texas, Arizona, Florida are sending migrants to northern sanctuary cities. Democrats are calling it a stunt. It is a stunt. And it's a good stunt because it's calling attention to a couple of things that need calling attention to. One, the hypocrisy of a lot of liberals. They, they declare their cities sanctuary cities. You know why, John? Because it makes them feel good about themselves. It makes them feel noble. It's sanctimonious BS because as soon as you ship migrants to their, sanct to their sanctuary cities, it's not in my backyard. Wait, wait a second. I like migrants from a distance, but I don't like them coming to my city. You didn't think I meant that, did you? So it points out their hypocrisy. Another thing it does, it's li liberal media hasn't really been interested in illegal immigrants. Well, now they're interested. So it, it's it's it, this stunt has has had a purpose and it's been a good result, I think. But here's the important part. Here's what advances the story, as they say. Not everybody who votes is a Republican. Be careful, my, my Republican friends. Don't push this too far. DeSantis, Abbott, two governors in Florida and in Texas, you've made your point. Don't push it so that it looks like you don't care about poor people who really simply want a job and a chance at a better life. They, that doesn't mean they can sneak into this country. I, I'm not advocating illegal immigration or open borders. Let's let's make sure we understand that. But if you come across as cold-hearted, as using these people as a joke, haha, we sent them to Martha's Vineyard, which I thought was a good move. You know, I smiled at that one. Be very careful. All sorts of people vote. Democrats aren't going to like this. No surprise there. Republicans love it. No surprise there. There's a middle, and you need the middle, my Republican friends. You need the middle. Don't offend them. Be very careful going forward. Yeah, I think, and I think that 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 is a concern for sure. I mean, there's there's a, uh, you know, like you said, it was a stunt, and I think it can come across. You know, when you're using sort of desperate poor people as a prop. Um, you know, you're definitely you're definitely walking a the line there, and and it's it's not just the Republicans that do that, you know, with illegal immigrants. It's 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 both sides that do that. Um, you know, I think dropping dro dropping some of these people off in front of uh, uh, Kamala Harris's house was a little maybe, maybe that was a little too far just just from the prop standpoint. I don't think there's anything wrong with actually, you know, that particular location, but the way it comes across. I want to plead guilty here. I don't want to I don't want to pretend. That stuff is funny to me. <laughs> Just drop them off at Kamala Harris's, the, the illegal immigrant czar. That's, that's funny. Martha's Vineyard, which is the hotsy totsy capital of America. I smiled at that. But yeah. you, you made your point. Not you, John. The Republican governors, you've made your point. Take it easy. Don't push it too far. That's all right. I've got to do. That. Yeah, and, and it, there, I mean, and there are other, you know, um, Republican politicians that have been doing this. Um, uh, Doug Ducey 
um, down in Arizona. He's he's not. I don't think he's getting as much attention or getting as much criticism for in some part because he's been, from what I've read, more active in coordinating these efforts with the local communities that these these people are going to. All the others haven't been quite as active. So and there's and there's some questions still from uh, Ron DeSantis what he did. Uh, whether or not the people he moved to Martha's Vineyard actually knew that's where they were headed. I think there might have been a little bit, just, they're just still sort of digging through that. There there's, seems to have possibly been a little bit of deception, whether it was, I, I doubt it was DeSantis himself, maybe someone in between, but a lot of these people didn't seem to quite know that's where they were headed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, the next item. Um, so Maureen Dowd, um, New York Times colonist, she recently wrote a piece in which she compared uh, Donald Trump to Vladimir Putin, saying that both would, would ra in her quotes, would rather destroy their countries than admit that they have lost. Um, you have some thoughts on this and you wanted to, to share those. Well, first of all, there's some good news here. The good news is liberals are no longer comparing Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler. Yes, <laughs> baby you know, steps. Now, <laughs> now they're comparing him to Vladimir Putin. I'm writing a piece about this, so it's still noodling in my head. Maureen Dowd is not some fringe, left-wing, obscure website columnist. She writes for the, uh, the, the, the institution where a lot of liberals get their talking points where the media certainly gets its permission to cover certain stories in a certain way. She writes for the New York Times. So what she writes has some clout, it has some influence. And let, let me, you read one quote, let me just read you one or two and then I'll make my point. Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump long entwined continue to on vile parallel paths. They would rather destroy their countries than admit they have lost. Hang on Trump fans out there. There's some truth in that. Donald Trump cares more about not coming off as a loser in the 2020 presidential election than he cares about what he's doing to America. But you can't compare, listen, you can compare me to Mussolini. You know why? We both like Italian food, okay? But it is an unfair comparison because the differences are greater than the similarities. So comparing Donald Trump to Putin, because they do have some similarities, they're both dishonest, they both care more about themselves than they care about their country, you know, things like that. They, they both don't want to admit that they're losing or that they lost, but only one of them invaded a, a peaceful neighboring country. Only one of them has troops that killed civilians, including children. Only one of them has henchmen who push political enemies out of windows and down flights of stairs. Only one of them does that. Donald Trump, for all his faults, and regulars know I'm no fan of Donald Trump, for all his faults, doesn't kill anybody. He doesn't, he doesn't fake suicides of his political opponents. Only, only Vladimir Putin does that. And the bigger journalism point, and this is why I'm writing this piece that'll be on the website on Monday, the bigger, the bigger journalistic point, John, is that even opinion columnists, they have a lot of leeway, as they should, they're opinion columnists, they have an obligation to be fair and not to smear somebody simply because they can't stand the person. And here's why, because they're playing a dangerous game. There are people out there who are on the verge of violence, even as we speak, and you don't need anything to push them over the over the edge. And if liberals like Maureen Dowd are rightly concerned about threats to democracy, what they're doing when they compare Donald Trump to Vladimir Putin or Adolf Hitler or Genghis Khan for that matter, what they're doing is pouring gasoline on the fire. They're further polarizing Americans. They're not encouraging a conversation, they're ending a conversation. And you know what? They're also a threat to democracy. They don't see it that way, but they are. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's. I don't know why there's. I, I guess I get the under. I guess I understand why there's this tendency to 
to make such comparisons, you know, but it's, it's, it's really to drive home a point, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's so often it's, it's really kind of, it's ridiculous, you know, what they do. Like you said, it's good that they're not doing the hit, the Hitler one this time, but I mean, this is, you know, but, that's pretty but, much but here's the point. You're right. There, you can see why they do it. And there are comparisons. They're, they're both dishonest. They both don't want to admit, one doesn't want to admit he's losing, the other doesn't want to admit he's lost. They both care more about themselves than, than their country, I believe. But the differences are so much greater. You know, I can't compare you, John Daly, to Adolf Hitler because you both like Knockwurst. You know, you know it's just stupid. You can't do that. It's, it's a dangerous, unfair game. You can, Maureen Dowd and liberal columnists can write all the negative columns about Donald Trump and Republicans and conservatives that they want. If, I, I wish they'd stick to the issues, but they're free to do that. But when they cross the line and compare people to tyrants and monsters, they lose, they lose me and they lose the right to be taken seriously. Right. And one, one more big difference. I don't think Trump has ever been on a horse uh, without a shirt on. So that's that's a def another one we want to keep in mind. Very, there. Good. Very good point, John. Very good point. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to another story. So there is a story um, out of North Dakota that the, uh, the mainstream national media seems not particularly interested in. A, a teenage boy, an 18-year-old, was run over and killed by a, a drunken 41-year-old man after the two apparently had some kind of uh, political argument. Uh, now, when when speaking to police afterwards, this guy, his name is uh, Shannon Brandt, claimed that the teenager, his name is Kaylor Ellingson, I believe, uh, belonged to a Republican extremist group. That was the phrase he used, and that he was worried that this group was going to come after him. So yeah, Bernie, you wanted, you wanted to talk about this this week. Yeah. Um, it kind of expand on both, you know, the explanation this guy gave and also the lack of media coverage. I'm going to I'm going to tread on one of your unfavorite issues. What about ism? <laughs> Bear with me. So let's say this was a MAGA Republican who claims and I say claims, I'll explain why I say claims in a second, who claims he got into an argument with a kid who was an ultra liberal. And he ran him down with his car and killed him. You know what would happen? That would be the lead story in every liberal publication and TV outlet in America. They'd be all over it. But as you rightly said, there's very little coverage on this in the mainstream media. Very little, Some, in some cases, no coverage. They're, they're ignoring the fact that this guy claims he was, he got into a dispute with a, a basically, a MAGA Republican kid, okay? So there's the hypocrisy of the media. And you know what? I'm tired of banging my head against the wall. I, did, I wrote a book, Bias, in 2001. It's worse today than it was then. The media is biased. I'm not even gonna get into an argument with liberals about that. They know it's true. And this is an, a, one more of a million examples proving it's true. They would cover it a certain way, if it were a MAGA Republican who ran down a liberal kid and they ignore it basically or play it down when it's a right wing guy claiming that he, I'm sorry, a left wing guy claiming he got into an argument with a MAGA Republican extremist kid. Now, the reason I say claim, John, we don't know that he really got into an argument with this kid, but why would he say he did? Let's think about this for a second. And I hope everybody follows me on this. Why would you, if you didn't get into an argument with a kid, a political argument, why would you say, well, the kid had extremist MAGA views, Republican views? You'd say it to get sympathy for what you did. You follow what I'm saying, John? Yeah, yeah. You'd say, you'd say it because... Well, I didn't just run down a kid because I was drunk. I ran him down because he was a Republican. What kind of nutcase, what kind of culture do we live in where you think that will get you sympathy? I can't take it anymore. 
I'm thinking of saying goodbye to you right now. I can't take <laughs> this craziness anymore. That it really does. It really did kind of come across like an excuse almost that this guy used. Well, but you got to understand, this guy was a Republican. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I don't. I don't. It just. Yeah, I mean, I. You, you look at just. You look at something that was so much less. It should have been so much less important, like the coming to the Covington school kid years ago who got all this press because he wore a MAGA hat and had a smirk on his face, you know? And here in this case, you know, someone actually got killed, uh, you know, if, if you believe what this person says, you know, at least the, the, the series of events, you know, because of this political disagreement, because of this person apparently like Donald Trump, you know, and it's, it's uh, you, you compare the two and it's just amazing. And we're supposed to pretend, we're supposed to be stupid and pretend that there's no liberal bias in the media. Homie, don't play that game. I am not, I am, I am finished with that. I am not arguing with liberals anymore about whether there's a liberal bias. There is. End of discussion. There is. And they keep giving us evidence of that. That's not to say I'm a fan of some of the crazy garbage that right wing media does. But left wing media is the mainstream media. They are the New York Times, the Washington Post. CNN, MSNBC, they they are the vast majority of the media. You know, Roger Ailes once said to me, I wrote to him and I said, Roger, there's right wing bias also. He said, say whatever you want on the air. You have, I'm not stopping you from saying anything. And then he added, but liberals are worse. <laughs> Good point. No, I think I think it was Newsbusters pointed out. So they, you know, they 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 do a lot of the research, the MRC, to see how much of these items are covered in the media. And they did note. I thought this was interesting that the Associated Press did actually run a small piece on it, but totally left out the part about the uh, the guy who did who ran over the kid um, using the term Republican extremist group and mentioned that there was a political disagreement, but not what his actual explanation was. They completely omitted that, which was I, like, I, wow. I, you know. I think I'm not sure about this and it really doesn't matter in the long run. I think it was CBS news that wrote the piece, not the oh. AP, but I could oh. be wrong. about that. Somebody, some mainstream organization ran a piece about this driver running down a kid and they left out one detail that the guy claims that the kid was uh, 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 an extremist Republican. Well, why would you leave that out? That was the justification in this drunk driver's mind for killing the kid. And you leave that out? Yeah, I mean, it would seem, I know this is a, the, the cynical take here, but it would seem that that was, could have been a, a, a a method for make, making sure this story didn't become bigger than it actually was. I, I don't want to throw that accusation out there. I, I, I disagree with one word. It's not cynical at all. <laughs> anyway, th there's a common thread running through our discussion today, and that is hypocrisy. The hypocrisy of the left in, in the sanctuary cities. There's a hypocrisy that Maureen Dowd is worried about and liberals are worried about a threat to democracy, and yet they're threatening democracy by comparing Donald Trump, who has many, many faults, to a tyrant and a monster like Vladimir Putin, and before that, Adolf Hitler. And there's a hypocrisy in the media, how they cover this, this North Dakota story if the tables were turned, if it was a right-wing guy who ran down a, an 18-year-old kid because the kid had extremist liberal views hypocrisy we're all guilty of it to some extent but the liberal media they they practically own own the, the hypocrisy market at least today yeah yeah no there's it's uh it's hard to deny it's hard to deny any any objective look into these things is just is, is just kind of astounding but um well that's probably a good place to go ahead and leave things for today uh bernie is there anything else you'd like to talk about anything on your mind i i, I just want to end the way i always end please tell your friends about us the more the merrier i like these discussions i like talking to intelligent people i'm 
almost all of you are. I say almost all of you because every now and then I get a crazy ass comment that I shake my head over. But we want we want more of you. So please tell your friends. Absolutely, absolutely. And let us know in the comment section what you think about today's episode and if there are any other topics that so we've taken. Um, member topics before and gone with them. So we'd like to hear what you'd like to have us uh, talk about and listen to us talk about. So, all right. Well, thanks again, Bernie. Um, appreciate your time. Always good talking to you and have a great day. My time is your time. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye.